There's the, as we discussed yesterday, getting a group of developers in a room and actually being able to sit and talk and discuss things. And there's the, sometimes just the time alone. And then there's the Reiki coming up to you, it's like you're giving a lightning talk tomorrow or something, should I be going to do something? Okay, so one example of an issue that no longer exists in Dancer 2. If you have a desk small Dancer 2 app, you define a serializer, you define a template engine, that's fine. And you try and return a template from a root, it will try and serialize it. Uh, has anybody actually not tried this? <laughs> okay, it sucks. Um, I've seen some really horrid solutions. Um, I wasn't going to swear. I've seen people trying to undef the serializer in groups that are trying to do it. Um, you're going to end up fighting yourself. Best practices has always been to split your app, have an app that just serializes for its output and have another app that handles the HTML and use Plat to uh, bind it here. Um, until came, well, he raised this as an issue and I was like, it'd be really good if there was a way to do this. Um, he came up with one way, we cleaned it up together, um, used SendFile underneath. But it still wasn't great. It worked. Um, Right there. Sending HTML is easy, but sometimes you actually want to do the reverse. You actually want to send serialized stuff when you're normally returning HTML. So there had to be a solution. And so the brainstorming when Reiki comes up and says you could not like me for tomorrow. That's a two plugin send as now exists. So if you try and do this, you would get YAML back if you hit that route or route, depending on how you want to that's two plugin send as introduces a send as keyword, and so and I were discussing could we put it in a call or worry about the data. But you can now literally say send as HTML the output of the template and you get HTML out, even though the yeah. serializer is defined. And send as JSON splat, you get JSON out, even though the yeah, serializer is defined. Done. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice for CPAN modules because you, you 
if you run in secret module, you can just sort of write in log messages. And then we have a usage of secret module, you can decide which logger he actually wants to use. Uh, so like, and of course, log any doesn't do the logging itself. You still have to use any of the 1,000 available log, message, uh, log classes that are available so that all your own books will be so, take a look at it, it's very nice and takes a lot of hassle away from logging. Uh, so, and measure everything wants to do the same for generating stats. So, for example, you have here some schema, uh, some schema thing, and you want to count how often you view some product. Um, so, you just use measure, measure everything, and then you have this stats global thing imported into your namespace, and you can say, oh, okay, this product got one view. Um, here you want to add some more information, so you have um, not only how often you it, but some categories and stuff. Okay, you can do that using tags. Uh, and then you have another, another method called buy, so you <coughs> sold something, so you write another measurement up. Uh, and you can even have different ways of things you want to measure, like not only the counter, but for example, how much you actually need. Uh, so, but the nice thing again with Stormfront Log N is that you can use it anywhere. So, your result set, you can just use the module and you can do your results in some controller. It looks like catalyst, but it could be anything. Just use the thing and write your results. In some front shop, just use like everything and write some stats. Okay, it's a very nice way to. There's no need to pass around the stats method in your call stack and you can see. There's no need for a call object like catalyst or C. No idea how dense it is, but uh, you just use measure everything and get uh, So what does it do? This basically does nothing because it uses the null adapter. Uh, okay, so the first if you have to actually use it, you have to use an adapter. Uh, so in the in the script that uses only modules, you just define the adapter, uh, use JAR or whatever. Uh, just to, like any that you find with the null adapter, which has nothing. Uh, there is one other adapter, but by now it looks like a file, uh, which uh, looks like that. So you specify a file and then you write stuff into that thing using the InfluxDB line protocol. InfluxDB, what's that? I can continue for ages, so I'll continue until I'm stopped. The so open source database with Nico, it's, it's a time series database that's specialized software for storing stats. Very nice stuff like OTSP, Kafka, Cassandra, and all that. Uh, it looks has something like call card, which you can use to generate nice stats and everything. You can also use Grafana, you can use the API. <laughs> uh, next. Using body parameters, uh, body parameters, rod parameters, 
break my arm and stuff like that. It will analyze it, it will find it, it will complain about it. This is another example. I'll date stuff. We didn't have the colon syntax, which actually I introduced, I'm sorry. Um, the colon thing doesn't exist, colon test does, and it's old. It's not used anymore, colon script. If you take a look at this, this uses keywords that just don't exist in the answer to, parent array and load. Um, this one, for example, calls uh, params query, which is good, but then the other one is not okay because it calls params without any source. And what you can see here is I actually prepared some code that I showed you over here. And if I take a look, this is the repo. So you have the policies, and there's two examples here. And you can take a look at a dot or all of these, let's say. Oh, let's do this instead. There we go. So if you take a look at uh, all of these, these are the examples that I showed you before. We have params, params with a source, syntax, where the, these uh, tags don't exist anymore. I call, and then and then eg star.pl. What you can see here is a very concise output of what I actually collect, which is the file, the line, and the kind of problem that you have there. So, uh, A.pl in line 4, 8, 12, and 16 uses a uh, uses param without providing a param source. Now, if you actually run this, uh, I have another mode. This is just for the output, so don't, this is not how you're supposed to run this in production. You're supposed to run pro credit. But, this is the kind of stuff that I recognize. Um, and what I have is the error, the policy, for example, required date forward slash, which is not that important. So this one, for example, we hit the merge parameters, and then you can say the file, the line, the description of the problem, and then a, a, lo a longer explanation of what the problem is. So hopefully this will get uh, much bigger with plenty more policies of stuff that will help you transition your apps from Dancer 1 to Dancer 2, or to improve your Dancer apps without actually running any of the code. So it's not like this thing that we're working on, and I think it's nice. Um, and I did not put it until, like I said, what are you stupid? Please upload it. Um, although we didn't use that word. So that's it. Thank you.
this is literally cut and pasted from the um, from the pop. I mean, when I tried this on a board, that was like flabbergasted. Testing only. Um, Andrew's going to try some more detailed tests on this. Really, just did some basic stuff, um, which I'll demo here. Um, so there's that, and we'll just demo it real quick. First of all, C. <laughs> Very detailed test here. Uh, so you can see that IP address. Here is a flat page from Interchange. That the card works. Touch that. 
And that is really better because we don't need anymore to compile the pseudo root into real root because we only define the real root. So for the end user, it's better, it's cleaner, we don't need to call anything else, and the code of the plugin is even smaller than the first version. And well, it works, so uh, the, the very last thing for this lightning talk is just a little demo. Uh, I'm not sure if we can see something here. Yeah. So this is the first root of the demo app. It shows me my score. And uh, now, okay, no, well, okay, anyway, I times up. So if you want more details, you can go on my GitHub, and it's also on Siva. Some people write into some fields, 
some people read only to others, some people write into those fields, um, and you can pretty much do anything you want in that respect. Uh, and then the final thing is uh, you've also got the ability to be able to hold records and changes for approval. So people can have read access, people can have write access, or people can have write access with approval. Um, if that happens, then their changes go into an approval queue, and then that's for, um, for somebody else to review them and save those changes. Um, like I say, very, um, very flexible and, uh, and very configurable. Yeah, that's it. That's all I'm getting up. It's, sorry, what I did say is it's called, um, it's called GATS. I don't like the name, um, but it's what I've got at the moment. Um, it's GATS, which stands for Global Accessible Data Store. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Over here. 
There's a bunch of stuff that we define. Press response, responder, writer, and error. They don't have any values by default. No way. Okay. Um, and what this does is actually localize them. And then we localize them, we can execute the code. But this is actually your stuff. Now, um, when you call delayed, what it does is create an object of type corresponds to delayed. And the object of type corresponds to delayed actually uh, encapsulates a sub instead of a response. And the sub is a type of response. And that sub, when it gets run by the server, relocalizes them again from the value that it stored when you created it. And then it runs your code, which is over here. And this is done every time you call delayed. And the nice thing about it is no matter how many times you call delayed within a delay, it will still re-encapsulate and then re-instantiate again. This took a while to do. The first implementation was on paper, but it worked. And uh, the second implementation was in someone's head, uh, just fed in the paper, and he said it works, so that didn't crash. And then we tried it and it works. And uh, that's how we get delayed.